Hi, Sandro here. Back in 2001, when this movie came out, Monsters Inc., little me was completely fascinated by the doors traveling around on rails. Now, what if I told you that there is actual reality that is not so far away from those doors? Well, it exists, and we're going to talk about it today. Join me now on this mysterious ride down into the hidden depths below a ropeway station. When the daylight fades and darkness descends upon the land, with the slopes devoid of humans, only few lonely souls are left to see the peculiar occurrences happening to those mighty strings of pearls. When a magnificent equilibrium of bidirectional motion suddenly transforms into a display of descent, the gondola seeks shelter for the night. This video is based on my last episode, the one about the ropeway flushing. To get a full technical understanding, I suggest to watch that one first. At the end of said video, I announced to do an episode about storing away gondolas of detachable ropeways. So when we went skiing in Pitztal, Austria, I saw that they put their gondolas away every night. I took courage and walked into the director's office, asking him if I could film while this was happening. He said yes. So let me introduce you to the Wildspitzbahn, a spectacular gondola ropeway in the Austrian, not Australian, but Austrian Alps. The top station looks like a UFO that landed on top of a mountain over 3,400 meters above the sea level. The futuristic silver egg also contains a restaurant. The large gondolas comfortably offer space for up to eight people, with the skis placed in holes in the center of the gondola. Compared to Flushen from the previous video, this is a much more recent ropeway, built in 2012 by Garaventa Doppelmayr. Its path is just about 2 kilometers long and covers an altitude difference of roughly 600 meters. Two cargo racks allow transportation of goods and waste for running the restaurant at the top station. The architecture of the buildings is so special that they actually got a prize for it. The construction of such a project is particularly challenging, as I am told by Markus, who has been working at the Wildspitzbahn since its very construction. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Wow, you can see this bahn in and out. Yes, a bit, yes. Through the extreme height of 3440 meters, it ging es two years. In the zwischenzeit lief gleichzeitig im Sommer noch the other bahn, die auf den gleichen Punkt ging. Also die, das war so gut wie kein Ausfall von der Betriebszeit. Durch die extreme Höhe ist es mit dem Hubschrauber nicht so einfach. Da schafft er nicht mehr so viel wie in niederen Gebieten. A separate construction ropeway had to be installed temporarily, causing three different ropeways to go up to the same peak at the time of the construction. Talking to Marcus, I quickly realized that I got very lucky again, as he's an extremely easygoing and kind person. When I expressed interest in the control room, he showed me around and explained the coolest features to me. For the convenience of the passengers, the gondolas have heated seats. Marcus boots up the controller and explains how this works. Hier sieht man den Bahnverlauf, da kommen die Gondeln rein, fahren in den Bogen und hier wieder raus. In diesem Zeitraum wird die Sitzheizung aktiviert. The yellow rails transfer electrical power to the gondola's heating system. This larger screen allows to view data about various aspects of the ropeway itself. Here sieht man die aktuelle Fahrgeschwindigkeit. So viele Gondeln sind heute aus der Station rausgefahren. Dies seit 2012. Die aktuellen Betriebsstunden und von den von den Stützen die Windmessung die aktuelle inklusive die Maximumwerte vom heutigen Tag. Windrichtung, so kann man die Stützen noch alle durchschauen. A third screen shows the RDP, a system scanning the rope at every single mast. It's well past four and Marcus is about to put the gondolas away. To initiate the process, he must reconfigure their trajectory, for which he first shuts down the ropeway. Was geschieht jetzt? 
Jetzt wird der Ablauf von der Bahn geändert. The device altering the trajectory has the same effect as a railway switch. However, it consists of more parts and switches much more slowly. First, the fixture holding the gondolas on their straight path is moved out of the way. Next, the deviation guide rail is moved into place. It will capture the gondolas and force them to take a right turn. When this is completed, Marcus switches the ropeway into single operator mode and starts it up again. <laughs> so. Marcus is now the only one controlling this entire huge machine. The top station is now unattended. There are no more skiers around that would need to be looked after. Down here, it's just the two of us. The loneliness feels somewhat uncanny. With the switch flipped, the gondolas take a different path. A complex system of conveyors takes over the gondolas and transports them into the garage, where they are stored for the night. To let you fully immerse into the mostly self-explanatory next minutes of the process, I'm gonna stop explaining and give you the real audio instead. Enjoy! When a lane is filled up, Marcus uses this panel to flip more switches. <lacht> Ganz allein der Herr dieser riesigen Maschine. Genau, ja. Was, genau. Ist, was ist das für ein Gefühl? Ja, es ist eine große Verantwortung. Weil äh, die ganze Bahn mit Kaffee, Architektur, alles hat doch 22 Millionen gekostet. <lacht> Und <lacht> da ist halt das nicht so ohne. Aber noch nie was schief gegangen. Gut, sei Dank nicht. Passt doch alles. <lacht> so, letzte Gondel. Das war der letzte. Jetzt fehlen nur noch die Leute vom KW und der Kollege. Die kommen mit den letzten drei. Ah, es gibt auch noch drei Gondeln. Ja, die zwei Lastengehänge ja. für den Müll, der Taxi, wo im KW oben anfällt. Der wird dann mit dem runter transportiert und das Personal kommt mit der letzten Gondel runter. Ich kann der Kollege oben zurückhalten. Unterbahnbetrieb, so wie jetzt, ah, okay. weil dahinter keine Gondel mehr kommen, bleiben die drei der Weile oben, bis die Kollegen so weit sind. An antenna as well as a solar panel are attached to each gondola. Most ropeways have speakers attached to masts to make announcements to passengers. However, due to the extreme weather conditions surrounding the Wildspitzbahn, announcements are made here via radio, an internal speaker in the gondola powered by the solar panel. Immer wenn wir das Café, das Wasser hochtransportieren, gibt es eine Durchsage, da wir langsam fahren müssen mit der Bahn, wird eine Durchsage noch einmal, damit die Leute wissen, was passiert. Marcus then asks me if I'd like to go see the motors. How could I say no to that? To my surprise, we're not going into a room, but climb those stairs instead. We are now standing above the big red wheel. Its size is impressive. As we stand here, the three remaining gondolas are just arriving. The 
the motor room is located on top of the ropeway. Together with the red wheel, it all sits on a cart that can move back and forth, technically limited to 4 meters and in reality going up to 3 meters when all the gondolas are full. To ensure that the rope is always at the right tension, the whole cart, including the red wheel, is pulled back by hydraulic cylinders. Compare that to Flushen, where the top station has a motor room powering a wheel that is fixed and installed on a different floor than the motor, and the bottom station's wheel is on a moving cart to ensure the rope tension. Since all the energy is taken from the rope via the large yellow wheel, the axle carrying the force must be able to shift, leading to a multitude of moving parts, all of which modern ropeways no longer require. Das ist alles. Fehlt nicht alles, ja. Genau. Wow! Also, die schon anfassen. So. The assembly consists of two motors, two service brakes, and a transmission that is directly connected to the big red wheel that sits immediately below the transmission. The two blue brackets are the safety brakes, connected directly to the wheel, just like at Flushen. In this more recent ropeway, many of the mechanics are protected by removable blinds. Another thing that has changed in the 20 years separating these gondolas is that the energy to power the tires in the slow section is no longer taken through the big horizontal wheel, but instead harvested from the rope by specialized reels right after the clamp decouples. That's the reason why we don't see these in modern ropeways anymore. Another thing that has disappeared are the chains. The clocking of the gondolas is no longer done mechanically. Instead, sensors track each gondola throughout their course through the slow section. If a gondola is coming in too early, the computer activates this bero that blocks a single tire and causes the gondola under it to wait until the distances are good again. If a gondola gets stuck and needs to be moved manually, a part of the slow section's tire can be lifted hydraulically, after which the personnel can freely move the gondolas by hand. So in this video I was focusing on the garaging procedure, but in case you liked the comparison of two different ropeways across centuries, look forward to my next video. We'll be looking into two chairlifts that are just a few meters, but over 30 years apart. I've collected hours of raw footage that will allow me to bring you an in-depth comparison of how the technology evolved in the last decades. However, it will take me weeks to get all of this work done. To avoid that you'll get bored, I made an awesome ropeway compilation that you can enjoy in the meantime. Of course, you can subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the new video is gonna be done. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you leave a comment, I have greatly appreciated so many of the comments that were done in the past. Even though I cannot reply to all of them, I read every single one of them. I owe a huge thank you to Marcus with all of his explanations, to the directors of the Pitstall who allowed me to film, to Alin and Roland for helping me texting the intro text and for Vivi for reading it. Thank you so much and see you soon.